by way early. I actually woke up before anyone because I, I woke up like really early. Like, I had to wait for five Surely. hours. So you think that parents should wake up early? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Joanna from Nesting Story. And today I'm gonna help you get prepared for Christmas. But to not only survive it, but how to enjoy Christmas with five tips I've learned as a parent over the past eight years. Thank you to Duracell for sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video. So here are my five tips to survive Christmas and make it a little easier, a little more fun, a little less stressful for everybody. So tip number one, be prepared. Um, this is something that I feel like I'm finally, after eight years of being a parent <laughs> and doing Christmas with children and not just about myself, um, this is finally the year that I feel like I'm taking this one to heart. I'm finally getting prepared and doing things a little earlier instead of scrambling. So one thing I've done is I've been buying our Christmas presents a lot earlier. I've been taking notes over the past year about things that I'd love to get our kids and not just last minute deciding on something that I don't even know if they like. And I'm also wrapping them early and I'm putting them away so that they're all ready on Christmas morning. We used to have this horrible habit of wrapping Christmas presents on Christmas Eve and being exhausted the next day. Holden, what do you think we need? It's like a survival kit for Christmas. Batteries. batteries. So something else we've learned is to make sure we have a lot of batteries for Christmas morning. There's nothing worse than your child opening up a gift and finding out that it requires batteries and you are not ready and all the stores are closed. Make sure you read the labels on the boxes of the toys you've purchased early because you're prepared this year and make sure you get your Duracell batteries in the variety of sizes you needed and put them aside for Christmas morning. And what's even better is when you buy Duracell batteries at Walmart, you trigger a donation that goes to the Children's Miracle Network. The goal is to raise $150,000. So always be prepared. Okay, tip number two, don't be a hero. So let me tell you a little story about our first Thanksgiving dinner. I know this isn't Christmas, but it's pretty similar in terms of meal preparation. Our first Thanksgiving dinner we hosted at our old house, but it was really exciting. It was my first year and I was gonna do it right. I had always been a fan of Martha Stewart and entertaining. And I would dream about the day that I could put together my own meal, I could decorate the table I wanted, and I could create my own menu. We were having all of our in-laws over and I decided to have soup to start and then appetizers and then a salad. Like who has soup and salad, first of all, at a holiday meal? And then go into the big meal. So I went out, I went all out, I was gonna make everything from scratch. Well, a few days before I host this meal, I found out I was pregnant, this was with Holden, and I was exhausted, and I put myself through so much, and we announced it at the dinner table, and then I started bawling after I, we announced it, because I was so tired, and everyone was like, why did you try to do such a fancy meal? Anyways, ever since that day, I have found ways to cut corners, including asking people to bring parts of the meal, like a potluck style. I now always do that, and I never turn back. I always ask people when they say, what can I bring? I don't say nothing, just bring yourselves. I ask them to bring something and contribute to the meal, and that makes life so much easier. So plan an easy meal. It doesn't need to be fancy. You don't need all these extra appetizers. And also, plan meals that you could cook earlier in the day and maybe reheat or even cook a couple days earlier. Freeze it, defrost it, and heat it up again. Don't try to do anything fancy that you have to make right there as people are arriving and also leave you with tons of dishes. Tip number three, throw perfection out the window. Something I have learned is basically every Christmas, especially when you have four kids and there's six people in your family, someone will most likely get sick. There will probably be tears. So last year on Christmas morning, Mia woke up with a fever. We were so excited. We thought we had everything ready. And then Mike goes up to get her in the morning and brings her down and she's got a full blown cold and a fever. Hi, Mia. We couldn't really get a reaction because the twins are crying. They have bad colds. So is that bad? Yeah. What did she say hurts when you went upstairs? 
it was a bit of a rocky start getting everyone going with opening the Christmas presents. The big kids were super excited. She was very cranky and we were trying to split our time between being excited for everyone but caring for Mia. In the end, everything was fine, but I've really learned to go into Christmas throwing perfection out the window and expecting that something like an illness could happen. Also every year since we've had kids, there is typically tears in the middle of present opening. Um, last year there was an incident where someone opened someone else's Christmas gift and there were a lot of tears. The last time we got mixed up, like a bow, like oh, um, yeah. Everly opened bows. I and, remember. Yeah. Tip number four, pace yourself. Oh my goodness, this is something I've been pretty good at over the years and it's tempting as our kids get older to start over scheduling, but don't over schedule yourself. Pace yourself, work in naps for both your kids and yourself. Try to keep your kids on much of a schedule as you can. There's probably gonna be a lot of entertaining and a lot of visits with family and if you can somehow hold on to those naps for your kids midday, it will be a lifesaver. And you know what, when your kids are napping, try to have a rest as well, because if you keep going, 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 you will crash and burn. I'm gonna ask a question to Mia and Mama, Everly. Oh. Candy. Mia and Everly, do you have to have a nap on Christmas? Why do you think you need a nap on Christmas? Because we're tired. Yeah, do you think you're excited and you get really tired? Do you think mommies and daddies need a rest on Christmas too? Yeah, why do mommies and daddies? Oh, Bo, what do you think? Also try to be protective of days leading up to your Christmas events and days after. Don't have a ton of things scheduled beforehand and after so that you can have that buffer around those busy few days. Okay, my last tip, tip number five, is let go of what you don't enjoy. So this is something again I'm learning more recently. I'm starting to ditch some traditions that I don't think our family even noticed and was way more stressed than it's worth. Even when it comes to decorating, this year I'm ditching all the garland that I used to put on our stairs and outside because it was such a pain to put up, it's a pain to store, it created a huge mess every time someone went down the stairs and got all the little bits everywhere and I thought no one's going to really care if I don't put up the garland anymore. So I'm ditching the garland this year and it's going to be so much less stressful. Also over the holidays, you're getting together with a lot of family and friends that you probably haven't seen in a while. If you feel like some of those situations are a lot more stress than it's worth, see if you can scale back a bit and be a bit more protective of your time and focus on what you want to do. What do you think is the most important thing for about Christmas? Is it? Oh. Just, oh, yeah. with your family. Yeah. What about, what about having fun? Yeah. So, yeah. so is it important to think about focus on what you love doing, get rid of some of the stressful oh. stuff, yeah. and have fun? Yeah. Right, you? Ready, right, Mike? <laughs> so, I want to know from you. What are your tips on making Christmas just a little less stressful and a little more fun? Is there anything you're dreading or specifically looking forward to? Thank you again to Duracell for sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video. So if you like this video, hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love for you to subscribe and if you have subscribed, thank you so much. It means so much to all of us. I'll see you guys soon. Happy Holidays!